Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Yes, I know. Jiggly camera, jiggly road. You know, I'm a busy man. And sometimes this is the best that I can do. High quality production here on the homestead. Um, today is our, our monthly meeting. Man, that this is... I'm using something different because what I always use broke. And it's just, it's doing this. I don't know, we'll have to suffer through this. It toughens you up. Builds strength and grit, okay? Uh, we have our monthly meeting this morning. That's what I'm doing is bouncing back and forth, getting all the, the equipment and the gear and the, you know, paper towels and toilet paper and food and, uh, you know, iced tea and coffee and all that stuff uh, taken over to the building that we use for our monthly meeting. So that's, that's going to be exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, always a always a good thing my goodness this is getting on my nerves I, I need to build up my own tolerance to this I'm sure you're all just excited to hear all those noises and watch this jump around um, but it's it's always a it, it's like recharging you know Re we're having issues here there we go Recharging the batteries. Okay, there. So if you can make it out today, please do so. The doors open around 11 or 12 o'clock. The meeting gets started around 2. It's a Come early if you're able to. It's a good time to just mingle and get to know each other and you know talk to people that like mind and that kind of stuff. Very family friendly. Bring your wife and children. You know, I have people all the time asking me, is it all right if I bring my wife and kids? Absolutely. And I don't want to be part of any kind of preparedness homesteading group if it's not involving the whole family I, you know if, if you if you find one that's like oh leave your kids at home oh you know no this is uh, this is just for the men no 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 families involved man I wouldn't be part of something like that no matter how much you paid me I mean there may be appropriate times to do specific training and stuff that you, you know you don't want children around but if it's if it's just gatherings and meetings and stuff yeah if it's not family then, then forget it um, some things came out yesterday. It, there, it's actually in the news. Um, that first, I first heard it as kind of almost whispers, you know, rumors. But it came out in the news that I guess this evening, uh, the Biden family are planning a family meeting. They should probably do those more often if you look at that family and how they behave. But anyways, they're planning a family meeting to discuss the future of uh, Joe Biden's presidency and his, his campaign for presidency. And so we'll see what that ends up being. You know, there may end up being a, um, a bowing out. Who knows? It's possible. Or they may come out of that like a, you know, a, a bull out of the gate, you know, ready to just, yeah, we're gonna take this on and we're gonna go all the way to the end. So we'll see. Um, my, I'm still, and I, this isn't a prediction or a bet or anything, my, I'm still leaning towards uh, Gavin Newsom as the the front runner for the for the Democrat candidate, but it, it certainly could be Michelle Obama. I would be surprised if it was someone like Hillary or Kamala, but you know, who knows? Um, New York Times and the Atlantic Journal um, have have come out calling for Joe Biden to bow out of the race. So it's it's gotten pretty serious when some of the you know the old guard. Uh, mainstream media is, is against him, so that's that's never a good sign. Um, I suspect that regardless of whether Joe Biden and his handlers decide to stick with the race or bow out of the race, either way, there needs to be a distraction from all of this. And so, um, I, I my my money, if I were a betting man, and I'm not. But if I were a bet man, my money would be on Israel and Hezbollah. That something's going to heat up there. Things have been heating up there for the last, well, for a while now, but especially the last few days. Hezbollah's been lobbing a whole lot more rockets uh, into Israel and drones, and they're making all kinds of claims that they've got new weapons and they've got troops coming in to reinforce them, you know, Iranian and Syrian and uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, multiple nations have told their, their citizens to get out of Lebanon, to evacuate. Israel's been making a lot of bombing runs, um, 
you know, aerial bombing runs into uh, southern Lebanon. Sorry, this is the worst part of the room. Uh, so I, I, I suspect, not a prediction, I'm, I'm not predicting anything, but my guess would be that uh, Israel and Lebanon is going to pop off soon, real soon, because that's that would be a good distraction for that transition, you know. They, they'd be able to, you know, slide in Gavin Newsom. It wouldn't be the top headlines. It would, you know, oh, yeah, this is happening. And, oh, by the way, uh, you know, Gavin Newsom's going to run instead of Joe Biden, right? Um, but, so I would be prepared for that. You know, it, it's going to change things. It's going to change the dynamics of the election, even though most of us knew that this day would probably come. It would be unlikely that uh, Joe Biden would be running for president come November. I mean, I know it's still possible, but still unlikely. They need they they need some energy, and they need to make the the stealing of an election look fairly legitimate. You know, I mean, if it's you know if they've got this guy that's literally on life support that wins the presidency, it's gonna look a little suspicious. But they got some younger, vibrant, you know, kind of charismatic, sort of good looking. Kind of guy who cares that he's been a horrible governor you know we're not we're not gonna talk about that it doesn't matter that he's run california into the ground and and there's been this mass exodus for years in california that that's not the point the point is is that he's a party man and he you know he, he holds the party line and he's he's young right he can he can actually finish a sentence and so that'd be something to, to get him behind and i'm sure uh it just push their far left globalist evil agenda even further but anyways um th th all these things that are happening these are all perfectly good reasons to be doing the stuff that i tell you to do or that you should be doing um and, and it's, i'm not talking about just preparedness i mean that's that's almost become a given i mean that's that, that's not that's not even unusual anymore right stocking up have food supplies you know beans and bullets and stuff that's that's not we're not even you know cutting edge anymore saying that kind of stuff i got to be more cutting edge and so my cutting edge is is you've got to start building your community around you and boy do i get resistance for that i'm telling there's hardly a single subject that i can talk about that i get more you know resistance than talking about community i want you to think about it this way uh, i'm gonna challenge you here so hold on uh Pretty much since the dawn of time, since humans were created, humans have been communal. I fully believe that we were created by the Most High to be a communal people, right? And we've been communal, generally in small communities, close-knit communities that helped each other. It wasn't until, oh, the last century or so, uh, basically when the deep state Illuminati, Mason, you know, evil people started kind of ruling everything in, in more overt ways. Did that change? And here we are now, a society that has strayed so far away from community that even the conservative segments of the community, of the society, are fighting against community. Oh, no, it's dangerous. Oh, it's impossible. Oh, you can't trust anyone. I'll be fine on my own. I don't need other people. And I'm telling you, this is this is the direction that we needed to be moving towards. Um, you know, you can you can have your little mad group. You know, four, five, six families that are in a geographic area. You know, a few miles apart. But if your neighbors around you are not prepared, and things start getting bad, and they panic. And, and they're confused and they're terrified and they don't know what to do. How how safe really are you when you've got you know homes around you? And they, they they're either going to potentially turn violent or they're going to come begging, uh, which then could turn violent, or they're going to you know call in the, the the government to come and help. And now you've got that all around you. You know how safe can you be? No matter how prepared you are, how safe can you be when all the people living around you? people in your little small community are are, are not ready they're, and then they're not just ready individually they're not ready as a community they haven't built those or rekindled those strong bonds as a community I know some of you live in big cities and downtown areas and you're like man this ain't gonna work for me but the, 
vast majority of you live in small little towns or out in the rural areas. And this concept that I speak of has been the norm forever. We, today, the modern society is the abnormal society. Let's go back to what's normal. And what's normal is, is, is having a bond with your neighbors around you, uh, a strong community that pulls together, that helps each other out, you know, someone gets cancer and the whole community pulls together and raises money for them. Someone's house burns to ground. Everyone comes together and helps rebuild that house and help those people out. You know, that, that's the kind of stuff that goes on. Everyone in the community is donating to the, you know, a particular church that does, you know, food baskets for the needy. That kind of stuff where they come together. You know, there's little local festivals and everyone kind of comes together and they, they, they know each other. They're not close, close friends, but they know each other. And they're there to help each other when times get tough because when times do get tough, that's what's going to happen. Those communities are going to pull together just like they did centuries ago they'll pull together and they're like you know what it's more important for us to keep this working than it is for us to run off to you know big brother for them to help and and if you are truly expecting things to get bad then you really should be working on that and, and just getting to know people building relationships around you and that's that's what it's all about in fact that's what society just is it's relationships with people and we've got to start doing that because things well, things are spiraling, folks, and, and they're bad, and they're just going to get worse. It's time to get your houses in order and your communities and prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.